All right, you're watching TVC Breakfast. Let's head to our last discussion of the day. The election is uh, gradually drawing nearer, and the tension on who will become the next president is on the minds of many people. As it is, the Independent National Electric Commission has 93 million registered voters as compared to the 2019 election, where there was barely over 84 million voters. Among all the among all the 36 states in the country, Lagos, Kano, and Kaduna is said to be the most, is the state with the highest voters. I recall that INEC official also said that there is no postponement of the elections, which everything going as planned. Uh, joining us in the studio is a political analyst, Bola Oba, uh, to help us make sense of all of this. It's nice to have you join us this morning. Pleasure. Great. Pleasure. Now, uh, 93 million voters registered in 2023 against uh, 84 million registered in 2020, uh, 2019, which tells that a uh, significant rise of about uh, uh, 10, 11 million th thereabouts. What vibe, what signal is this sending to you when you analyze the democracy that we are uh, talking about getting people more involved in the process? Nigeria adds about the population of Finland to its size every year. About 5 million people become Nigerians every year, mostly by about. And I must be very honest with you that ordinarily should be an advantage. So I am not surprised that in the last four years, either out of uh, the creation of more awareness or those who have attained the age of eligibility, I'm not surprised that that much and the population, or the number that has been added to the voters list now, what we, what we call the electoral roll in England, is indeed far more than the populations of Benin Republic, Togo, Guinea-Bissau, about three or four countries neighboring Nigeria on the West Coast put together. So I'm sitting here now thinking, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal advantage in, in some respects if leadership were to be visionary and if leadership were to be up to par. But whatever, is, whatever could, be, could be articulated or could be used to be an advantage, if not properly used as an advantage, could also turn around to be, uh, to be a disadvantage. The point is that as a Nigerian, I am disillusioned, particularly because between the ages of 18 and 49, you have about 72 to 73 percent of the 93.460 something million people in that band. And I'm thinking, you know what? The world should be coming to beg us like they were going to China, to beg China in the late 80s and the early 90s. If leadership were to be visionary, if leadership were to know what it wants to achieve. But you know what? We, I don't want to sound Jeremiah, but we also have a reserve army to populate device groups such as Boko Haram, ESN, uh, some claiming to want uh, a kind of loony ideas in some other parts of, of the country. Because when you don't, we, we were once young, when you don't properly arrest the energy of young persons, you are practically nurturing a living danger against yourself, be you as a parent, be you as a mentor, be you as a leader. You must always, that is why your coach is not your fan. Your coach does not even celebrate when your fans are clapping because your coach knows. Looking out. 
Right, but my own focus, because in trying to, uh, you know, understand your analysis of the situation at had from the outlook of leadership in Nigeria, but then on the other side is the issue of followership. In 2019, we had um, about, you know, 10 million plus minus from the current figure of, of um, 93. We had about 82.3 million, but then only about 34.7% uh, of that 82 million something came out eventually to, to vote. So how do we ascribe this? We obviously cannot say this is, you know, a leadership problem now, but looking at, you know, this current opportunity we have on our hands, are we likely to get, you know, a better response from the people? At my last count, there are less than five liberal democracies or just about five liberal democracies on the face of the earth where voting as a civic duty is mandatory. It's a criminal offense in Australia if you don't go out to vote. Mm. It's a criminal offense in Brazil if you don't go out to, vo to vote. And we know that across the world, across the world as we speak, because there are so many distractions from this little God on our palms to many other exigencies of life, we know that people would rather be arrested by some other distractive, even in a country like Nigeria, that unusually, unlike most other liberal democracies on the face of the earth, Nigeria gives a public holiday on the days of our general elections. But even at that, you see, ironically, many of our youths, the most hard by of our population, playing footsie. You know, when I say footsie, not the kind of one uh, they trade, you know, the, not the money car of the, of the boss or the capital market in London, but they're playing football on, mm -hmm. you know, on the street. Mm -hmm. I want to believe that there are so many factors, aside the fact that some of us, and I take responsibility too, and some of us who are privileged to have powerful platforms like this, we get invited to, we need to find strategies of engaging not only this young person, and particularly even disturbed, that on this particular occasion, since I've been following the electioneering and electoral system in Nigeria, systems in Nigeria, over dispensations, political dispensations, I'm particularly disturbed that this time around, the population of male registered voters surpasses so the female, the female, the female mm -hmm. uh, ladies, uh, women may seemingly be losing interest because they may have seen through the chicanery and the facade. They come every four, four years to come and I no. used to mock Yeleja when I was a boy in Mushi. <laughs> I used to mock Yeleja. Every day, you know, I used to mock her because they were more, the, the, the female characters were more engaged. But in the age of social media and in the age of the little God on our palms, people like you will not be distracted. Or are equivalent today in most markets don't want to be disturbed by the politicals going around and making noise. It is disturbing for our polity that we are beginning to see the most strategic, most strategic group in our in, in our polity seemingly getting disengaged and disinterested. This is actually the time. I was actually telling a group of uh, political strategists a couple of days ago, this is about the time now that we should be looking for not only talking policy, you know, every policy, you know, ideas, and throw, throwing it at them as punches, we need to be looking for things that we first arrest their emotions, arrest their sentimentalities, and usher them into the ideas we want to sell, sell, sell to them. Because idea shown in two is a game of strategy. Mm. Mm. So I am thinking there are so many other factors that may be discouraging the youths. If you are hungry and angry, and somebody is calling you to come and do something that is seemingly sanctimonious. The language coming to my head as a mushy boy 
I can't say it until. Uh, please don't say it. And if I say it, <laughs> oh, go for a fool. I won't wear it. <laughs> and you said it. I, I never said it. I never said it. <laughs> well, I didn't hear anything, so it's fine. <laughs> anyway, the, the, the INEC has extended the, the date for collection of PVCs uh, from the 22nd to 29th. And uh, a lot of persons, we see the rush where people are getting to. Uh, want, wanting to rush to collect their PVCs. But the extension, a lot of people see it as, as a welcome development. Others even say we should they should even extend further. But talk to us what difference that is going to make in the number of those who will get involved eventually uh, and, and away from being disenfranchised. I want to also believe that the extension, as good as it may be, and I'm not in any way, shape, or form gainsaying the fact that it's a positive move. I'm also thinking that it may be uh, the reason why the procrastinators may want to err on the side of reticence than on the side of being, of being emotionally goaded to do it at the, you know, when, when, it's, when it is necessary. Because we have a tendency, uh, we have a tendency in Nigeria to attitudinally and behaviorally want to call on the side of uh, lastminute.com, mm. you know, <laughs> get the rush when it's less than 24. You know, we have, we have a strategic uh, situation going on in Nigeria now where people need to take in the old bank notes. Amongst other challenges, one of the reasons why you still have the, the hold banknotes in circulation, more in circulation, is that people think, eh, any time we'll go and do it. You, you understand? Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, the extension is good, but don't, we must also intensify the campaigns and the awareness to let people know that the extension does not, uh, is not to encourage you to... Uh, to further procrastinate or not do what you ought to do, you know, in a, in a timely manner. But you see, the, the extension is good. It, it speaks to inclusiveness. It speaks to uh, liberality. It speaks to uh, not wanting to stampede people. And we we have seen just from the extended uh, the extended registration period, we have seen uh, more than ten million people went out there to hide their names. To, to the electoral role mm. is, is a positive. Okay. Mm. All right. We'll, we'll come back to this. Uh, let's uh, take a short break. You're watching TBC Breakfast. We're looking at uh, the election. We're building up to the election, and everyone is interested. Uh, what is it going to be like? I have a candidate. They have a candidate. We have a party. They have a party. And it's been back and forth regarding uh, what uh, the new dispensation is going to look like. But the most important thing right now is a PVC. All right, we have uh, Walaoba here in the studio, and uh, we have been talking about this now. Personal voter card. Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> there, there's a young lady, you know, who's uh, this video's gone viral now. Yes. No, you're me. Oh, yeah. I, I think when I saw that video, I was, I was, I, I was, I was it's impressive. really satisfying. The entertainment yes. value. Yes, absolutely. The message is sent yeah. across. Uh, and she was like, before you talk to me, go Thank and get you. your PVC. Right. Go and get your PVC. And that's when we are mates. That, that, that we, are not, we, are, we are not Absolutely. mates. You understand? It was really amazing. As, as, as entertaining as, as it would be, but the information is there, the education very is there. And they it's too. powerful. Very and I think uh, INEX should even take advantage of people like that. You yeah. know, all of those kind of skits go a long way to... Uh, and it's about time our, pol uh, our political parties too looked down the mm. barrel and see that there are many bullets mm. that, the, that, that, that the gun can fire. Yeah. Beyond this uh, political talk, mm -hmm. we will build your roads. Mm. We, 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 they must also be using such creative ideas, such uh, edutainment mm -hmm. ideas mm -hmm. to engage some, some pockets of voters, eligible voters mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we're not quite. Some some went to take the PVC because it's perhaps the only bona fide form of 
identification mm -hmm. they can present. It's true. And even not, the, not for the, the voting right. purpose. Right. And even in the office space, mm -hmm. go and get your cards. We've and even in the office that. space. Mm -hmm. If you want to apply for a driver's license, then you're looking at, a, at an average of about 20,000 naira. Mm -hmm. They tell you six to 7,000 naira, but you know it's an average of 20,000 naira. You need to have a bank cards. The most authentic database in Nigeria for me mm -hmm. is the BVN database. But you know what does not carry? It does not carry pictures, mm -hmm. and, and most people don't accept it for, for a form of identification. It's just for you to do your transaction. If you want to take, uh, apart from driver's license, if you want to take me, the frustration to, in fact, they are beginning to tell me now, feedback I'm getting for people like us were ushered into the executive suites of uh, director level officers and they took her this thing and Mr. Gwela this And somebody was telling me the rigmarole he had to go through yeah. for weeks mm. to get is get mean, in, in, in is before mean you even get captured. So the only thing that they are even begging you to come and do, and they are not taking money from you, except some some of these allegations we are hearing, and I hope those allegations are not true, is that uh, it's, it's uh, extortion. The, the, the uh, voters card. Mm -hmm. But I'm beginning to hear too that there are some deliberate efforts to frustrate some people from getting their, uh, uh, you know, their voters cards because some believe that they may not be voting for the party for the ruling parties in their states mm -hmm. that is preposterous utterly illegal INEC and the security agencies should be more firm in curtailing that because it is indeed the ultimate abuse against yeah. nigerianness mm -hmm. To, to inflict that on anybody. Right, Mr. Oba, this week alone, INEC had, has been in the news, and understandably, but, you know, the, the most controversial of it, or the controversial arm, was, you know, the position by a senior official about elections, uh, the possibility of elections uh, being postponed. Of course, INEC chairman, Professor Yakubo, has, you know, said there is no going back. But when you look at the, the security concerns, how, how, how surprised were you at the initial position about um, you know the possibility of postponement of postponing the polls, and now that you know the government says we are indeed um, you know still following through the timetable. When the INEC chieftain made that supposedly or reportedly made that remark, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, chiefs of security agencies. I mean, senior securocrats in Nigeria all came out to say no, that their eyes were still on the ball and the ball is rolling in the direction of the elections. And ultimately, yesterday, whilst addressing the leaders of political parties, the chief of INEC, the chairman of INEC, Professor uh, um, Mahmoud, Mahmoud said without any any form of uh, any shade of doubt that indeed comparing what prevails now with what had always prevailed in the electoral history of Nigeria, the elections management body had never been this prepared 42 days to the elections. I'm sitting there wanting to beg some of us who have you know, who have the advantage of the media space to be very circumspect the way we also uh, construct our headlines the way in fact one newspaper this morning says I next chairman recounts if you in simple English I went to school in Mushi in fact the highest higher institution I attended in Nigeria was a Lagos State Polytechnic now used to be Lacoste in those days in the early 80s. Uh, you know, I still know the meaning of recount. Recount is somebody who had once said something and who is doing the vote to fashion, mm -hmm. right. who is doing the vote fashion, yeah. you know, to, to say, but it was not the INEC chairman that was quoted in the first place to have, to have, to have even made that remark. That, that statement. So when well, he was representing the INEC chairman. <laughs> but it was not the INEC chairman. Mm -hmm. But, and, and if a major newspaper is saying, I neck recants. Uh, recants. You want to think, mm, 
This is the this is the new style of the at least when I was a boy, you know, when I was a boy in Nigeria with the high school like I do, gay was being happy. If you say gay now, they will look at you and they is Mr. Gwalaba. <laughs> so maybe it's maybe English you know, languages are very dynamic. Mm. But we we need to be very circumspect the kind of words we use, the kind of phrases we use. At this juncture, Nigeria is not a security El Dorado, but look. Uh, mm. All right. we, we get the expression. Mm. We get it. We get the uh, we're not there yet where elections cannot uh, hold. Now, let's talk about the issue of campaigns. We have seen all the candidates, presidential, governorship, going you know, crisscrossing their, the country and crisscrossing their states, depending on uh, what level they are. Uh, but some Nigerians still say that they're not seeing issue-based campaigns as much as the, you know, tit for tat, to throw jabs against the other candidates, you know, and so on. What are you seeing on the spectrum? I want to sadden you a little bit. Mm -hmm. And not because I am a sadist or somebody who takes pleasure from, you know. But the truth be told, in the age of social media, when we now function more in our echo chambers, you will never get campaigns of ideas or campaigns of issues anywhere anymore in the world, in any liberal democracy. Not in America, not in the United Kingdom. Germany used to be the most circumspect nation I've ever lived in or been to in my life. I lived in Germany. I, when I was a boy of 24, 25, when I first emigrated from Mushi, it was my first port, port of call in Europe. And we look, my, in fact, indeed, Germany has defined me more than the UK where I lived for decades and indeed practiced politics because the social market system is in my blood. Social enterprise, making sure that I don't win alone. I create ideas that people will win together with me so that stability. But even in Germany, this revolution has brought down values. Because when I, when I lived in Germany, the degree of circumspection, especially amongst politicians, was so pronounced because they were very conscious of their history. Less than 50 years then. And because of that, they were very what they would say openly, what they would even commit to openly, and even Germany has gotten to the point where you have the AFD, the, a, a very ultra-racist party in the Bundestag. My brother, nobody speaks in liberal democracies. We should grow up. I tell analysts like myself, and I tell uh, intellectuals like myself, public intellectuals like myself, about time we grew up. Nobody speaks to grandiose ideas anymore because people's, are, people's attention spans mm. are Don't very... Mm. The lady of the house said it. <laughs> Husband of many wives. <laughs> Sorry. Don't change this one. I wonder what title. <laughs> I wonder what title Bolava is giving me now. <laughs> because <laughs> suddenly now, we see you Well, Mr. Obo, let's look at the numbers now from that uh, voter register. You know, you were talking about uh, newspaper headlines. A particular headline this morning is saying, Cano that has, you know, a substantial 5 million plus uh, registered voters is, is now the latest bride in town. Of course, Lagos also has an enviable 7 million plus voters, uh, well, eligible voters from that list. Uh, what, what do you make of the, the politicking in these lines, in these areas where, you know, of course... In Kano, for example, now, unlike before, where, you know, President Buhari, you know, packed a substantial number of votes from Kano State, there's the um, Kwekwanso angle now. Of course, he's also talking tough in that regard. Even Labour Party, too, is there. We saw the mammoth crowd, too, for, for APC, uh, you know, recently in Kano State. What do you make of, you know, the where at campaigns juncture, are headed now? Where this can, juncture, in, in this area? Well, our sympathizes with the on the on the... Kano is the microcosm that speaks to the dilemma of Atiku for me at this juncture. How is that? APC has an infrastructure on the ground. And if anybody was doubting that infrastructure up until the campaign of the APC presidential candidate in Kano, the campaign of the APC presidential campaign in Kano, 
Kwanso cannot be written off in Kano. So a sizable percentage of the of the electors in Kano, the, the, the electorate in Kano, can Kwanso will harness their votes. You know what? Some of the people who will vote in Kano are people who are young, feeling hard done by, and you know, they are because they are well educated, they are those who can very few percentage of our population who can say I wave this primordial, primordial this predisposition to primordial instincts and primordial uh, sentimentalities. I will vote for this guy because my generation sees him as so at this juncture, what is the sizable chunk that is left? In what has always been the only part of the North, the electoral only part of the North, for a candidate who believes that so, Kano uh, is going to be a buffeting. Is that? Is that you? Are, you now have a buffet, mm. and you see, just go and dish your own, mm. unlike the monolithic hold. That somebody like President Buhari had in, in a number of uh, elections. rounds of elections that, that he partook in. That is my situation in Kano now. Mm. I just see somebody, he, he, will, he may even get his 25% and above, but you know what? The traction that the lump sum vote could have done to propel existing Kwankwaso, as I was joking with a friend of mine, you know, a consultant in England, and yesterday, uh, it, it was the first day he sent the message, and was saying, uh, somebody was the dark horse, that, uh, and I was saying, you know what, dark horse, yes, but factor in Kwan Kwanso and Obi, mm. the decimation they may do to the traditional and, I, I, and I, you know, I'm, I, let me confess at this juncture that I'm, an, I, I'm addicted to reading a, the oldest international magazine on the face of the earth that I know of, the economics magazine. Mm. Although they had very, you know, they scored President Buhari's presidency as this small, they, are not, they believe that Bola Metinumbu is infirm, but they said openly that they wrote, and they, they would rather prefer Peter Obi, but they said at this juncture, Somebody is the candidate to beat mm. because it does seem to them, as they've written it, I think they were playing a pawn about Bola Metinumbu's background in Chicago, that the, the, the ruling party seems to understand, seems to have a more effective political machine than running the machinery of government. Mm. So I, I'm thinking, Kano, and Kwan Kwanso may end up. Present uh, NM, NMPP may end up winning the gubernatorial seat in this in Kano, but you know what? I am I'm even doubting it because the presidential election will take place two weeks mm -hmm. before the governorship election, and uh, that was why some of us were agitating before the the the, the uh, 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 you know, electoral act when, when it was still a bill that. We ought to have done it from the ground up, not from the up down. Because there is no way, especially in this election, there is no way that once you've known the president mm -hmm. about a week, well enough, about a week before the gubernatorial and the state houses of assembly elections, there is no way some states will not flip mm -hmm. for the, for the, the party for of the, the president-elect. But what, what factors do you see that would, that would shape how the pattern of voting? What, 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 are, what are the issues, what factors do you see that would influence the pattern? The very factor that is telling us in the face now is the obedient phenomenon. Nobody can discount it. Mm. In fact, for those of us who are not even in politics, if you are in secular leadership in Nigeria, looking at the obedient Phenomenon as a backdrop in in the backdrop of NSAS is about time we reevaluated 
About time we reevaluated our strategies at engaging the young persons. They are very angry, rightly so. Rightly so. I tell people that if I if Yelega don't sacrifice their life and made me go, you know, and I, when I said I wasn't going to read or study anymore in Nigeria and went to go and take that Esusu before it was at all to send me to Europe. I probably would have been become because come to think of it, when a young person believes that he or she sees no more road, stupid ideas will come into your head. And in those days, we never had social media. That is why now, even when I'm sleeping, I'm sorry to say, even when I'm sleeping, when young persons are, I double lock the doors. You never know who is angry. You never know who can who can batch on you. Because of some misinformation, misunderstanding of the world, what ideas. Uh, so I, we need to, re about how we reevaluate how we engage with that generation. So the most, the, the, the greatest factor that is staring me in the face now, the momentum of a third party in a liberal democracy, anytime speaks to the dis dissatisfaction of the many. Mm. We must find a way of engaging these people. And I'm talking as somebody who should know. I, I, run, I run two major training institutes. Even with the distrust they express, the disillusionment they express, even when you are presenting opportunities to them with instant reward. I have training schools. I have any time annually in the last four years, I have between 120 million to 150 million on the table to train young Nigerians. They don't come. Even when the, some of the sponsors are ready to be giving them stipends every month. I am just, we just signed a deal now with Yaba College of Technology to train people in computer numerical control machining. This is a skill that is today, if you are proficient in it, there are companies waiting to employ you in Germany, Australia, and they will work to, get, to, to, to undertake your immigration visa for you. You wouldn't have to kill. They don't come because they function in the age of ignorance, the culture bubble. They don't even listen so much to people like us. So we are we are now trying to devise stratagems, stratagems beyond the conventional to engage them. So if there's anything I'm expecting to see make a difference in this election round, and I've been telling them to every opportunity I have, look, it is natural. It's sometimes to chase the ball on the field and not get the ball. Not because you are weak, not because you have not given your best, but you just sit aside and redefine your strategy. Because if OB does not win, if OB does not win, like if, and I, I'm not a betting man, I can place my last bottom cobble that OB will not win, imagine as Brenda of Nigeria. But if OB <laughs> does not win, in the backdrop, of what happened January 6th in America last year, what, is, what just happened not too long, a couple of days ago in Brasilia, in Brazil. Brazil, what is happening presently as I'm talking to you in Peru, when more than 15 people were killed as of yesterday in Peru, because we need to find a way to people in senior securocrats should be thinking of strategies to engage the youths because many of them will be disillusioned and it may feed some untoward phenomena. All right. We, we have to leave it here. Well, however, ultimately, uh, we wait for how the polls will be and how Nigerians will react with the 93 million After all, we say at the end of it that, that the opinion expressed people. by... No, of course. And, and rightly of course. so. And rightly so. <laughs> thank and you so much, Bolaba. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank so you much, uh, Bolaba, for coming thank on the program. You. Thank you. Right.